and it burnt my flesh into these deep gashes in my back. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not calling any of us, is not testing any of us in this kind of way with our neighbors, with our co-workers, with our fellow students in the classrooms and the hallways of learning that so many of our young people are in, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not testing us in this kind of way. But it's not to say that we are not having tests. And I believe, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, that many of us are sleeping through this life. We want to be effective as dais, but we're sleeping through the history of the United States. We're sleeping through what's going on today, so how in the world can we be effective like Brother Tariq and Y Islam in bringing the message to this land if we are asleep and not recognizing? And I'm starting with myself. Let me just give you uh, a couple of quick examples, and I'll quickly be done. Let me give you an example of some people that have been in the news quite a bit. As our professor has talked about how we as Muslims are getting, arriving late to the media party. We have been in the party for a long time, but we were still doing the twist. When people had stopped doing that 30 or 40 years ago, we were still twisting like this was the latest dance craze. But now, many of us have arrived at the party and we realize, as this, this video just showed us, that the media has not only manipulated public opinion, it has, in many instances, the mass media has manufactured an opinion and then delivered it into the homes and onto the computer screens for not just non-Muslim consumption, but for Muslim consumption as well. Let me just give this quick example about this movement that is supposed to be the rage in America today in the political circles around this country. There are a group of people Imam Khalil, I will call them people. I want to call them something else based on some of their behavior, but I will call them people. There are a group of people who are organized under the name right now as Tea Partiers, the Tea Party. And for those who know a little bit about United States history, we know that in Boston, Massachusetts, when some Patriots got on a boat, a British boat, and started dumping tea into Boston Harbor. They were saying there will be no taxation without representation, that these people are playing on this very significant political protest in America that helped start a process that ended up becoming the United States of America. But these people are vulgar, obscene misrepresentation of what happened back then. They have a leader who used to be the, the U.S. House majority uh, leader. They try to act like there's nobody behind this. This is just American citizens just popping up out of the ground like mushrooms. There's no organization to it. But there's a guy by the name of Dick Army. Dick Army is from Texas. I forgot in Killen, Texas, uh, uh, down there somewhere in Texas, in the Republic of Texas. And this guy, Dick Army, used to be one of the biggest lobbyists after he left the House of Representatives in all of Washington. They say he was the rainmaker for real. It wasn't that football player in the strip club throwing dollar bills. Dick Army was the rainmaker in Washington, D.C pouring millions of dollars on our elected representatives to lobby them and to secure their vote on the interests of the people who were paying him. This particular group, and I'll be coming to an end in a second, bear with me to make this point, that this particular group, these Tea Party,
party people are responsible for something in my years on earth, in my days as a political scientist, I have never seen in my lifetime the kind of behavior against elected officials that these people are getting away with. Let me bear with me just a second, and I'll finish this point. 45 years ago, 45 years ago in this country, African American people at this particular juncture in history could not go to the polls across the country and vote. In early 1965, black people in this country could not vote. There was a man a young man at that time by the name of John Lewis. John Lewis was participating in a peaceful march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama in August of 1965. The Alabama State Troopers went wild. They went crazy. These are people peaceful followers of Dr. Martin Luther King and John Lewis's skull was cracked open by blows he received from the billy club at the hands of Alabama state troopers. But after the passing of this health care bill, the Tea Party people stood outside the halls of Congress and called him the N-word and threatened his life and tried to spit on him as some of those who supported health care legislation was fat upon him. These are elected United States representatives. Others who voted for the health care bill. What happened to them? One man who voted, a congressman from Virginia, some idiot from this Tea Party group thought he had his home address, but he had his brother's address. Someone went to his brother's home with his wife and his four children in the house and cut the gas lines, trying to cause an explosion. People were threatened on the telephone. United States elected officials, congressmen, senators, threatened by these people. Then I say, where were we? Most of you in 1965 when John Lewis was getting his head cracked, most of you probably may not have even been in this country. Some of you, like this young man here, wasn't even alive in 1965, but there were Muslims who were here. There was a movement called the Civil Rights Movement that everybody knew about it. Why? Because the media put it on Front Street. And those of us who were Muslim, where were we? Where were we when John Lewis was vilified and cursed at and attempted to be spat upon just a few days ago? Where were the Muslims then? Where were we? Where are we on issues like health care in this nation? Where are we? Where are our voices heard? I'm not ignoring very important efforts that are being made by Muslims across this country. I'm not ignoring those, I'm acknowledging those. But I'm saying that if you and I are to understand that we as a Muslim people are an integral, we are a part, an important, critical part of this land that the future of this nation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, Allah alam, but the future of this nation may be in our hands, it's in the hands of those who bring dawah to the people. That's not my crazy words, it's the words of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and Allah have made it clear that as long, no matter how corrupt, no matter how many gays are getting married, 